I've done thousands of miles of road tripping in my EV, from Tennessee to California to the Grand Canyon to Las Vegas. And I'm here once again at a Tesla supercharger, my favorite place when I'm on a road trip to charge. If you're like me, the biggest thing you're looking for is reliability, consistent speed, and a lot of charging spots, especially if you're not in a Tesla, you really wanna have enough so that your vehicle can fit and not be in the way. You'll notice here that I am parked on the end so that I'm not taking up more spaces than I need to, and it leaves plenty of accessibility for everybody else. The next big challenge is making sure that you have a proper adapter for these Tesla superchargers. And that's why I'm here today, is to test out this new adapter from Foxprod. This is one of the most essential things you need on a road trip, is an adapter to allow you to plug in to one of these superchargers you see behind me. Let's take a look at what's inside the box. All right, we're here in the front of my Lightning, and you can see here on the front of the box is the image of what the adapter will look like inside. It's all the standard specs that you wanna see, 500 amps, 1,000 volts. Flip this back here, open this up. All right, packaging looks really good with the foam. Take the adapter out here. There you can see it looks just like the picture. And you've got a little carrying case inside. We'll leave that in the box for now. So as we look at the Fox Prod design, what we see here is a nice, compact, two pound form factor, very similar to what we saw from the original Tesla adapter. There are a couple differences here. Uh, underneath is where you have the push button switch to release the handle. And on the back here, you can see that just overall the shape is a little bit different from what we've seen with the Tesla. As we look down the front of the adapter, you'll see you've got your two DC pins. In the middle, there is not an interlock. We'll talk more about that later towards the end of the video. Here you're gonna see your ground pin and your proximity and your sensor pins. In the top there, that is where the AC pins would be for a J1772. These are not used for a CCS adapter. I prefer if these were completely blank. We'll show you some examples of other adapters where they've done that. Uh, but at the least you can see when you zoom in, there is no metal inside those contacts. And so this would not be used and no adapter should be used for both AC and DC purposes. They are not the same. The true test though is how does it perform when it hits the 500 amp peak that this lightning is going to pull for the first 5 to 10 minutes. Let's plug it in, let's check out the temperatures, let's check out the charging speeds and see how it goes. We're looking to see somewhere between 170 and 180 kilowatts when this thing's at the peak 500 amp draw. Let's plug it in and check it out. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to activate the Tesla supercharger by going to charge your other EV. And I'm doing it this way instead of plug and charge because I get a discount uh, by using it this way. Uh, you can see that it's identified I'm here at the Newark chargers. So I'm gonna hit charge here. Then I'm gonna select the stall that I'm at, which is 1B, hit charge here. And this is gonna start up the supercharger. Let's plug in. Now that it's activated, we open up the charge port door, flip down the DC flap. And then there's a couple different things to note here. With this one, unlike others, you can plug this directly in to the charger before plugging in the Tesla plug. And we're gonna talk a little bit about why that is important and whether that matters to you. And now we're gonna be able to plug this right into the adapter. So here we can see the blue flashing light and we can hear the Tesla supercharger starting to spool up. And this first five to 10 minutes is going to be when it gets the maximum charge rate and it's gonna be pulling 500 amps. The other thing I want to do here is I want to check out the temperature right now of the adapter. And right now, just as we start off, we're looking at, depending on where I aim the gun, anywhere from 89 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And I expect this to rise as it heats up, but as of right now, it's starting off in that 80 to 90 degree mark. And let's see what it looks like as it starts to heat up. So check this out guys, you can see this is exactly what we were talking about, that the high voltage battery is drawing 500 amps at the initial plug-in for about five, eight, 10 minutes uh, is about normal for the lightning. Not all EVs do this, but it's important to know that here I am drawing 500 amps of energy. This is gonna give me my maximum kilowatts. And what I'm looking for here is somewhere in that, uh, no lower than 170 certainly, uh, but closer to uh, 180, 190 is kind of uh, what we'd like to see. And as we look on the screen here, you can see that we are 
charging at 183 kilowatts. That tells us that this adapter is charging exactly like the original Ford and Tesla adapter did, and I'm not seeing any losses. So we're gonna let this thing rip here for a little bit, uh, get it all the way through the 500 amp draw, which is where you're gonna have your maximum heat and your maximum kilowatts going through the adapter. And then we're gonna check that temperature again, and we're gonna see how it's doing and how it's holding up. And inside here is gonna be a sensor that if it starts to overheat, will derate the adapter and slow things down. So there are safety protocols with all of these adapters, and that's something you definitely wanna look for, is does your adapter have some type of safety mechanism? Now we're gonna talk about some other areas of safety as well when we wrap this up, but for right now, the big thing that we wanna know is, can it plug in, can it work, can it not overheat, and can it sustain a full 500 amp charge all the way through that peak? So let's check back in in a few minutes and see how it's doing with that temperature and that charge rate. So now as we're ramping down from the peak of 500 amps and uh, we're settling in at a more normal temperature, you can see we're about 129, almost 130 there as we're ramping down from that 500 amp draw that we initially had. As we look at other parts of the adapter, you can see on the side, you're still though in the mid 70s, the Tesla handle itself, uh, mid 80s, so you're not seeing anything major there. Here you got some 90s, again, 112. One, there's that, that 130 at the, at the adapter point where it's into the vehicle. And although it may be a little warm to the touch, by no means is it hot at all. It's got this plastic cover and case that goes around the actual adapter itself. And so there's no problem here with overheating. And while you can definitely feel that it's warm, by no means is it getting hot or overheating or derating or anything like that. Keeping in mind, I am here along the bay in the San Francisco area. So you're talking about a very moderate climate. Might be a little different if you're in Vegas or somewhere in Arizona, but I'm not seeing any problems with the thermals on this whatsoever. Just a quick check-in before we hit 80% state of charge. You can see we are still at 118 kilowatts. You can see that our amps has dropped down here to uh, 300 amps. So that is normal for the lightning and that's the exact behavior we would see without an adapter. And now you can see at 80%, we've dropped down to 56 kilowatts. And these are the exact behaviors that we would see with uh, the approved Tesla and Ford adapter as well. No difference in performance here. At this point on a road trip, this is where we're gonna wanna unplug. 20 to 80%, 10 to 80% is kind of the target. And when you get to 80 to 90, it really slows down as you saw there to 50 kilowatts. And then when you get above 90, it gets even slower. Certainly if you have a really long stretch and you gotta go to 90, you can do it. It's just not the most efficient use of your time. Normally hopping from charger to charger is the better way to go. But as we go to unplug this, this is where some of the differences are with this design. And we're gonna talk about how some of the other adapters do it. But with this one, one of the things that you saw earlier was I could put the adapter into the truck and then I could take the handle and plug it directly in. Other adapters, you have to plug the handle into the adapter first and then put that into the vehicle. Now, the reason that that matters is because you really don't wanna be able to take this handle and remove it from the adapter unless you first removed the adapter from the vehicle. And in this case, the same thing that allows the handle to go into the adapter when it's plugging in to, at the beginning is the same thing that allows it to be removed while it's still in the vehicle at the end. So underneath here, if you take a look, there is a button and I can press that button with my finger and once I press that button, I can then take and remove the handle. And this is something that you really don't want to be able to do because there's a chance that if this is still charging or energized, that you could get an arc. This is not an ideal situation and I'd love to see them do this differently. And again, you can see that same lack of a lockout is what allows you to take and plug this right back in again. So what I'd love to see happen is that there was a way that this does not allow you to remove it at the end at a minimum. We'll show you a different one and how they accomplish that. That being said, anytime you're charging with any adapter, what you really wanna do is stop charging from the app uh, and then to be extra safe, always take and remove the adapter first. Here you're gonna do it by pressing the button here at the top of the adapter. Remove it first from your vehicle, then press the button at the bottom to disconnect it from the handle itself. So let's talk about some of the other adapters you may come across. We're gonna start with 
this one, which is an AC charge adapter, and you never want to confuse this uh, with a Naxxas CCS DC adapter or the other way around. These adapters allow you to charge on a Tesla wall connector at your home, or when you're at a hotel like you have behind me, one of the Tesla destination chargers. This is the only place you're going to use these, not at a supercharger. So now let's check out these DC adapters and we'll start with the original. This is the Tesla designed adapter that was sent out by Ford and Rivian when the Tesla supercharger network was first opened to other manufacturers. You'll see here that it has a plastic case all the way around. It's about a two pound adapter, very light, very compact. You can see that they've done a good job here making sure that you can't get confused with the pins. You've got your bottom two DC pins, you've got your ground in the middle, and then you've got your communication and your proximity pin. On top where the AC pins would be for a CCS, there are no pins at all. No way to get confused that you would ever be able to do AC charging with this. That's really a great design. You'll also see as you zoom in here and look close, that there is a lockout pin right there between the DC pins. And this is essential. This is what prevents you from being able to pull out the handle from the adapter while it's still plugged into the vehicle. Same thing is done here with the newest adapter from Ford. This is the Ford Electron version. This one you can see is much bigger, much heavier. And you can see that again, if you look down the barrel, that you've got the two DC pins, that lockout, right, that interlock right between, then you've got your ground, your proximity, and your uh, sensor, and then nothing on top where the AC would be. Again, this pre prevents you from being able to take the handle and remove it from the adapter while it's plugged into the vehicle. A great design. Now, A to Z goes about it a little bit differently, but it accomplishes the same thing. So as we take a look at the A to Z, you can see that down the barrel you've got your DC pins, but there is no interlock. You can also see that there are two pins there where AC would be, but if you look carefully, there are no contacts, no pins in there. I prefer if these were blank, but you can see again, there is no chance anybody will be able to use this for AC and no adapter should ever claim that you can. This is the heaviest of the bunch. It feels really robust. I really enjoy using the A to Z primarily because it has this single button design and control. The advantage to this design is that while you can still plug the handle into the adapter when you initiate the charge, you cannot remove it at the end of the charge. What happens is this is locked into the vehicle and then until you press this and remove it, you cannot remove the handle. Let's take a look at how that works. So some people prefer to be able to plug the adapter into the vehicle first and then take the handle and plug it in. With the A to Z, you can absolutely do that. We're gonna stop this charge real quick before my plug-in charge kicks on, but here is the important difference here between this and some of the others. This one, you cannot press the button and remove the handle. You have to take the button, press it down, and remove the adapter from the truck itself. And now that that's removed, you can press it again and remove the handle. That's a difference that really matters. You can see here now that we're using the Ford Electron version, this is the newest adapter that they have, that I cannot take the handle and put it into the adapter while it's plugged into the vehicle. This has to be done first. And that again is because of that lockout pin. That same safety though, makes it so that at the end of the charge, you can't possibly remove this from the adapter and have any risk of arcing. So again, that's the reason for having that extra piece in there that the Ford Electron and the Tesla original adapter have. Let's take a look at that one. So here we've got the Tesla adapter plugged in and you can see that there is a little lever here. And that lever is what you use to disconnect the handle uh, from the adapter when you're done charging. But here you can see, I cannot plug this in to the adapter while it's plugged into the vehicle. It's again because of that interlock piece that's there between the two DC pins. One thing people worry about with these adapters is that manufacturers like Ford and Rivian and others can void your warranty if you don't use their specific approved adapter. However, there is a law called the Magnuson Moss Act, which does not allow manufacturers to take and void your warranty for using third party aftermarket accessories and tools. And the adapter certainly falls into that. Now, do you wanna risk that hassle if it happens? What are the odds of it happening at all? How would they know what adapter you even used? These are all things you do wanna consider and you have to think about what you're comfortable with when you're choosing an adapter. I can tell you this much that I've used a lot of them and the biggest thing for me is can it handle the 500 amps and can it handle the 1000 volts? Now this is where it gets tricky. The only real official approved adapter are those that come from the manufacturer or Tesla themselves. Every other adapter on the marketplace is according to their terms of use, 
not an approved adapter. And so you want to think about that and whether or not you want to go with one of these aftermarket adapters that are out there. I'll also mention that a lot of these you have to be careful about because in the description, they'll say they're UL listed or they'll say they're safety certified. And I've just found that not to be the case. I can tell you there is a UL certification, but the only one currently that has done that and passed it is Ampinol, and that adapter is not available on the market. Others will say that they are safety certified and UL certified, but they really mean is that the cladding or the casing might meet some different UL code. It's not the adapter code for UL certification. I can promise you as the date of this recording, which is August of 2025, even the OEM ones are not UL certified. It has not happened yet. And one of the big reasons for that is the way the UL certification is written, you have to be able to test your adapter on a non-liquid cooled cable. And that is not going to happen with 500 amps. How these folks are going to market their adapters, they're not going to be able to do it for 1,000 volts, 500 amps. And it's just not possible. So it's somewhere in the 300 amp area is what these adapters will do with a non-liquid cooled cable. And so anytime you see somebody say that they are certified at 500 amps, 1,000 volts, UL listed, safety certified, I promise you they are talking about something other than the actual adapter UL listing or they're just making it up entirely. Let that be a red flag for you.